Hi everyone, this is Samantha from The Dancing Soap Dish and this month's Mosaic Soap Challenge is sure to brighten your day because it's neon. Yes, I'm doing neon mosaic melt and pour soap bars today. Uh, this is a different technique again with mosaic soap uh, that I haven't done to date, probably the most detailed to date because it's full coverage with grout. Uh, and I think these came out beautifully. They are a beautiful mosaic soap bar and I'm going to show you how you can make these today. So let's get started. So I'm just going to make myself some mosaic soap tiles and I'm going to speed through this process a bit because those of you who are following the 2023 mosaic soap challenge have probably seen this process quite a few times now. And those of you who aren't following it, why not? It is so much fun. What I've done is I've challenged myself to come up with a new and unique mosaic soap design every month for the entire year of 2023. And we've done some amazing things so far. I've put all the videos together in a special playlist on this YouTube channel. So when you get some time, you definitely have to check them out. Uh, but right now I'll get back to what we're doing. I will explain what's going on for those of you who haven't seen it before. What I'm doing is I'm making some mosaic soap tiles. So basically I've got these mosaic tile silicon molds. They're actually supposed to be for resin, but I use them for soap. And I'm going to make some mosaic tiles out of soap, all different colors, all these beautiful neon colors. So I'm just using this sort of abstract shape section of the mold for this project. Uh, and I'm going to make uh, basically the six colors of the color wheel. So I'll do yellow, green, blue, pink, purple, orange. You need 20 grams of melt and pour soap base per colored section that you do, 20 grams per color. Um, I'm using clear melt and pour soap base so that these beautiful neon colors can come through. I find my mosaic soap tiles take a, a good 20 minutes to half an hour to set. Uh, it will depend on the type of soap base that you use. But once they are set, you can just turn the molds over, bend and flex them and pull out all the different size and shape tiles. Uh, these ones are still a little bit soft, so I'm being quite careful. Um, but they don't have to be fully set. They just need to be firm to the touch. Uh, once I've done that, I'm going to actually take these molds and fill them up with another three colors until I have my six colors in all. Today I'm using some beautiful neon liquid soap colorings. Uh, these are specifically for soap, you know, from a reputable soap manufacturing supplier. Um, and they don't fade, they don't bleed, they're really awesome. I also recommend you have on hand small little measuring cups to melt your small amount of soap in and also a rubber scraper, which I've been using to sort of push the soap around and make sure that all the little mosaic tile cavities are filled evenly to the top. Once you have your collection of six different colored mosaic tiles, the next thing to do is to make some base bars. So these are the bars that the mosaic tile designs will sit on top of. Uh, probably could have done this at the start too before I made the tiles, but I think we've got plenty of time for these to firm up before we're going to need them. Again, they just need to be firm to the touch, not fully set. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I want uh, three 40 gram bars, I find is um, a good size for a base bar. Uh, so I've melted 120 grams of white melt and pour soap base. I've centered it. I've also included a little bit more for wastage. I'm giving that a good stir and I've plonked my mold on top of the scales so I can measure out accurately 40 grams into each cavity just to make sure I've got even weight bars of soap. I'm also going to spray them with alcohol just to finish them off and make sure that there's no bubbles in them. Okay, so the next step, I'm going to do something that I've never done before with my mosaic soap. I'm actually going to put the mosaic tiles back into the silicon molds. But what I'm doing is I'm taking the opportunity to mix the colors up while I do this so that I end up with a perfectly random pattern of mosaic soap tiles. I'm doing three of these today. Theoretically, I have enough tiles to make up six square sections of random mosaic tile designs. Uh, but for brevity's sake, I'm just gonna do three today. 
I'm jumping all over the place because I know that I have plenty of tiles, but if you did want to make six and make sure that you only used every single tile once, what you'd do is you'd make up your very first one and then you just substitute the colors to do the next one. So for example, you'd make up a square of random mosaic tiles. And then for the next one, you might say, okay, every tile that's pink in my first square is now gonna be orange and just so on and so forth. And you'd be able to use all of the tiles and not run out. Okay, once they're finished, this is what you get. You get these little squares full of mosaic tiles in a random color formation. Um, I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but there is quite a bit of um, just sort of soap fray and stuff around the tiles that's sitting on the lines that are gonna be the grout lines. And I wanna make those lines really nice and clean. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab a teaspoon and I'm actually just going to scrape the back of the mosaic tiles, especially the sections, um, you know, the lines in between the tiles because I wanna make sure that they don't have any soap on them, that they're perfectly clear before I do the next step. You can see from the video that I am scraping off, you know, a fair amount of soap there, definitely more than you'd probably expect there to be. And here we are now, we can see that those lines are definitely clearer and crisper than they were before. So uh, do that for all three or six of your patterns as well. I also want to point out these teeny tiny little mosaic tiles in the corners here. I haven't actually put them in when I was uh, assembling my mosaic squares. They're really not necessary for the project that we're doing today. You'll see why later. The next step is to glue all of these mosaic tiles together to complete this design. So again, I'm using white melt and pour soap base. I'm scenting it. That's optional, but I've chosen to scent it. It's only 50 grams of melt and pour soap base, so it's not a lot. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to pour it onto the back of these square mosaic soap designs to seal them and glue them together. Give them a good spray with alcohol and then take the soap and just pour it to the back, making sure that you cover the entire square. Just like this. It's a bit messy, but that's okay. I've got some um, non-stick paper just down to protect the bench. And that's all you need to do. You need to make sure that the entire square is covered. And what that will do is that'll seal the back of the tiles to the white layer of soap. Now, again, good half an hour later, and these are set. And now my job is to carefully extract all these tiles. Oh, look at that, that's so pretty, that's what it looks like. Carefully extract all these tiles from the mold, making sure that they stay together with the white glue that I've used to keep them together. Uh, so I find it's best to try and keep the mosaic design flat on the table and peel back the silicon mold. Uh, you might need to loosen it around the edges first, which is just what I'm doing here. And then as you do that, you'll find that it's actually quite easy to inch away the mold. And you should be able to release the square mosaic soap design still with all the mosaic tiles still in place. Let's see what we get here. So there we go. Now I did lose a few tiles, mostly these little ones around the edges. Uh, it's still quite tacky, the soap, so I should be able to just push that back in. Uh, again, some of the little ones around the edge won't be necessary, so I wouldn't be too upset if you lose a few. There you go, look at that. We have our square of mosaic tile design, very cute. I uh, just need to pop out the other two now. Again, bend and flex the mold. Loosen it around the edges as best you can. It just takes time and care. I mean, if you wanna do it fast, then you're gonna lose tiles. But if you just take your time and just inch it out bit by bit, you'll be able to um, get out all of the tiles still in place in the design that you created by putting them back in the silicon mold. There we go. That's what I was talking about before about peeling the mold back. And then I'll just pop this last bit out. 
Yep, I lost some tiles again. So those ones around the edges are just so tricky. Um, there we go. I can just push that back in place and it will stay there. So that's not too much of an issue. Oh, this is one from sort of in the middle there. So I really need that one to stick. Uh, all these tiles are going to be sealed from the top as well. So um, they will be able to, to stay in place. We don't want them falling off while people are trying to use the soap. There we go. And here I have all three of them finally demolded. I'm also going to um, peel off this excess from my greaseproof paper. I will reuse that um, as my soap grout. Uh, so here we go. I just need to cut off all this excess around the edge, clean these up a bit, just slice that off with a knife or um, sort of a cutter like I'm using here. And you end up with three lovely random neon mosaic tile designs. Aren't they pretty? Okay, so now I've got my base bars. They are firm to the touch and ready to go. As you can see, my tile designs are too big for my base bars. They don't fit. So the next step is to cut them down. So I have here a cutting mat. Uh, it's in centimeters um, because I'm using centimeters because this mold here, the cavities measure exactly six by six centimeters. Uh, so it's definitely easier to work in centimeters in this case. And I'm going to use the cutting mat to measure and cut down my mosaic tile designs to size. As you can see, they're longer than six centimeters. They're, um, they're not quite seven, but they're definitely over six. So we need to shave a little bit off the edge. That's why I said it didn't really matter if some of the uh, tiles were missing from the edge, some of those really smaller ones, because we are actually just going to end up cutting them off. Uh, what I'm doing first is I'm just making sure that I've got a really tight cut of the, uh, the white background against the edge of my colored mosaic tiles. There we go. Just cutting off that little bit there. And now that I've done that, I'm going to measure six centimeters. Just lining it up with the lines on the cutting mat. And making sure also that the part that I'm going to cut off has uh, those missing tiles in it as well. And then I can just take my cutter and line it up with the line on the cutting mat and just slice this section off. Just push it down like that. And I've just trimmed off this little section here, which is actually kind of pretty. Look at that. <laughs> uh, then I need to, obviously it's a square, so I need to turn it around and do the other side. Um, again, select a side where you've got missing tiles or, you know, the less pretty side that you're quite happy to miss some tiles off. And there we go. I've cut that one down too. If you've got some really tiny slivers left around the edges, it's probably best just to pull them off um, because if it's a really tiny amount, uh, they'll probably get melted when the, um, the top coat of hot melt and pour soap base hits them anyway. And as you can see now, that does fit inside the cavity of my base soap bars there. Sorry for the trouble with my camera. It's, um, it's finding it hard to pick whether to focus on the white or the black, I think, and it's giving us some really bright colors. Uh, but anyway, okay, so I'll just do this again, go through it again one more time just to show you. Give it a really tight trim around the edges. That little bit fell off and you know what? I don't mind, I'll make that the side that I trim. Then line it up with six centimeters and trim off one of the edges, just like that. Turn it 90 degrees and chop up some more. And then, oh, just get rid of any of the slivers if you want to here and there. And again, you have the perfect size to fit inside the square soap mold. And here's another one that I did earlier as well. And that one fits too. There we go. I'll just hold them up now so you can see all three of them. They are so pretty. I love them. 
All right, now the next step before we grout is to actually just poke a couple of holes, maybe four holes, one towards each corner with a toothpick into the gaps between the mosaic tiles. Um, basically because I want to stick these mosaic tile designs to the top of the base bars with a little bit of soap. And because these embeds, I suppose, for lack of a better word, um, are exactly the same size as the soap cavity. It's quite easy for air to be trapped in between the base soap and this embed. Uh, so I'm just poking some little holes in them, uh, which will allow that air to escape. Uh, I've tried to do it without holes in the past and you just end up sort of pushing the air around from corner to corner to corner and uh, you just end up with a big mess. So definitely recommend that you just poke four holes per piece with a toothpick uh, just to let the air out. I have some clear soap base here because I'm actually going to do something a little bit different for one of these soap bars. I know I talked about grouting them and I will, um, but grouting can be complicated. So I wanted to show you an alternative for those of you who see the grouting and go, mm, that's not for me. And that is to just cover the top of the mosaic tile design with clear soap. Because you can look past the tiles and see the white soap that I used to join it together, it has like a grout effect because you can see the white in between. So a quick and easy way to finish off one of these soaps is to just put down a tiny bit of clear soap base, use that to stick down uh, the square design here. Remember I poked some holes to let the air out, so that's not an issue. I'm just making sure that this is uh, pressed down quite firmly against the base bar, just using the back of my skewer to do that. And then you just take the rest of the clear soap base. I'll give it a really, really good spray with alcohol. That's a very important step. Uh, and then I will just use the rest of my melted soap base to just barely cover the rest of the soap bar. So I just want a very thin layer of the clear. And we'll see how that turns out in a minute. But what we're going to do now is get ready for our grouting. You need some tools. You need alcohol in a spray bottle because I'm giving um, my designs a really good spray with alcohol. They need to be quite wet. I've also got a scraper and some cotton swabs, which I've dipped in some extra alcohol, uh, which I will definitely need later. I've melted another 50 grams of white melt and pour soap base. I um, actually included in here the leftover that I saved from before. Again, scenting it is optional. Uh, I've probably chosen not to at this time because I reused some of that other soap, which had some scent in it. I'm going to work quite quickly, as quickly as I can. I'm gonna put down a teeny tiny bit and use that to secure this embed to the base soap bar. Pushing it down, you probably can't see it, but I can see the white soap oozing up through those holes that I created, which is what I want. It knows that it's definitely going to be sticking quite well. Um, then I'm going to pour a little bit more of the white over the top and just like you would grout you know normal tiles bathroom tiles kitchen tiles i'm going to start moving the grout into all the little spaces in between the mosaic tiles using my cotton swabs and also this scraper here uh, if you have excess soap which you probably will just use the scraper to um, remove it from the top of the soap bar just like this uh, it's looking a little bit messy at this point, but that's sort of how soap, well, tile grouting works. I mean, if you're going to be grouting normal tiles, you get them all messy and then you wipe the grout off and sort of um, let the tiles be revealed as you wipe back all that grout so that the grout stays in between the tiles but comes off the tiles. So that's why I'm using my cotton swab uh, dipped in my alcohol just to gently rub off this excess white soap here. Uh, because it's just been freshly poured, yes, it is hardening because that's what soap does. That's what melt and pour soap does. As soon as you pour it, it starts to harden. 
um, but it's still very, very soft and I am able to just use the cotton swabs and the scraper to uh, scrape that back. I, there's a little bit of a hole here, you can't see it on camera, but there was a gap where there was no soap. So I just poured in a little bit extra. And again, this takes a little bit of time, but what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna keep scraping back the, uh, the soap grout that I've just poured until I have a nice clear mosaic pattern coming through. So you can see why I showed you that other way of finishing off the soaps. So obviously just pouring the clear over the top is a far more efficient way of finishing off the soap bar. And it still looks good, um, but it's not, I don't think it looks as good as properly grouting them. But as you can see, once you've committed to grouting them, you really do have to um, just make sure you keep at it, keep going scraping that grout off the tiles, lots of alcohol, swabbing them and scraping them until you get the effect that you want. And here they are. Um, it's been a few hours now. I'm going to try and demold them. I'll go with this one in the middle first. So this is the clear that we did on top. I'll just pop it out. 
So as you can see, that turned out really well. Uh, looks really good from the side too. You can see all the tiles in there. Uh, the um, soap's a little bit turned up at the edges, uh, as you can see around here, but I might just um, shave that off with a soap. I've got this sort of an acrylic soap beveler here, and I'm just gonna bevel the edges. And I think that will make it look much better. So this is this is the cheats version of grouted mosaic soap uh, because I used white melt and pour soap base on the back of them to sort of hold them all in place to make my mosaic soap design. And when you look through, it looks like grout because you can see the white lines through, but I didn't actually grout them. I just poured clear on top. Um, but as you can see, that is very effective and definitely much less work. So you might want to do it that way. It's a very pretty bar of mosaic soap. And now it's time to demold these two bars, which we actually did grout in every sense of the word. I mean, we poured the soap on and then we scraped and polished it off. Uh, so you can see from the sides here, uh, I didn't really center it very well, my embed. Um, but it looks okay. I'm gonna use this beveler just to take a little bit more off the top. As you can see, I got a little bit more of the grout off. I'll bevel the edges. I think next time uh, I might cut the embed even smaller so that there's a thicker white line around the edges of the soap. Uh, that could look good too. Um, but I can also use uh, this beveler here just to uh, scrape off any excess around the edge. Let's have a look at her. I think she's looking pretty good. Yeah, it's a very pretty bar of soap. And the final one, just bring this one out too and clean her up. There we go. Got a little bit more of the excess soap around the sides, but we know we can clean that up. Yeah, like I said before, if I had it to do over, I might cut the embed a bit smaller so there's, um, um, a white border around the edge, which I think would look really good too. And probably also help it um, stay in place a lot easier as well. I'll just give this one a scrape down as well. It's looking pretty good. Yep, look at that. And there they are, beautiful neon mosaic soap bars.